Hello, and welcome to a digital statistics lecture for Salt Lake Community College. In this video, we're going to be going through section 4.3 for Math 1040, the coefficient of determination. This is going to be a pretty small section because it's basically an addendum to what we did in 4.2. It's, it's an addition to what we had already been working with with the correlation coefficient. This is going to have to deal with the coefficient of determination, which was another value that was shown when we did Linreg AX plus B in section 4.1 and 4.2, but it's the only value that we haven't explained yet. The coefficient of determination, otherwise known as capital R squared, measures the proportion of variation in the response variable that is explained by the regression line. That is a very important understanding for R squared. It's the proportion of variation that is explained by the line. Um, specifically, we usually analyze it as a percentage. So the percentage of variation that is explained by the LSR line. Uh, what I mean is if you think about the scatter plots we've made. So let, let's just make an arbitrary scatter plot here. Something like this. When I draw a line here, there's always going to be some variation here. And that variation is really the residuals here. Now, if you see, a lot of these residuals are pretty small, and some of them are barely existent. If you see, like, this point in the middle is pretty close to the line. So there's really not much variation at all. And usually you can chalk up small variation like that to the fact that, well, human life and just life in general isn't perfect. It's not going to follow a perfect straight line. There's always a little bit of variation because of randomness. However... Some variation is a lot harder to explain. For example, the variation from this bottom point to the line. That is a much larger residual, and that's a lot harder to explain. It's as if you were to try to present this information at a business meeting and say that here's the general trend for this data. And then somebody asks you, well, wait, what about that point at the bottom? Why is that point so far away from the rest of the data? and you answer with a shrug. That's kind of what trying to explain the variation of the data means. You're trying to say, how well does this line explain the data, and how much of the data can you explain with the line itself? That's what R squared is trying to do. So what percent of the data can be well explained using the least squares regression line? A few comments on that. Uh, R squared is naturally the correlation coefficient squared, hence R. So since the correlation coefficient was between negative 1 and 1, if you square any number between negative 1 and 1, you will get a value between 0 and 1, which is also why we analyze the coefficient of, de of determination as a percentage. So it's always going to be between 0 and 1. Uh, the closer it is to the regression line, the closer R squared is going to be to 1. So the closer to 1, the better it is. So it works very similar to how the correlation coefficient did. And to find R squared, as I, already, as I already said, you simply square the correlation coefficient. Just note that we often will define the coefficient of determination with a capital R squared. All right, so we're just going to do some connections, and then we're going to do a couple quick examples. Uh, these examples are going to use examples from previous pages. So you'll see that the first example at the bottom here will say page 8. And then on page 12, we have a couple examples that use data from page 9 and page 10. Page 9 and 10 already have printouts, so I just put the R values in there already, but page 8 did not have a printout of the calculator output, so we're going to do that one together. Uh, but before we get there, first example, we're going to match each coefficient determination to the appropriate scatter diagram. Now note that some of these are positive, some of them are negative. All R squared is going to be is, ho is how linear it is. It does not care if it's positive or negative linear. It's always going to be between 0 and 1. So we're simply going to look for what the strongest linear relationship is and then what the next strongest is, whether or not it's positive or negative. The strongest relationship by my R squared values given is R squared equals 1. That implies that 100% of the variation can be explained by the line. That means all of the variation. Really, that means that there is no variation from the line itself. Everything can be explained really well. That would be this last graph, number 4. That graph follows a perfect straight line, so likewise, 100% of the variation can be explained. The less variation can be explained, the more the data starts to cloud. So my next highest is 0 0.90. Oh, with my highlighter, sorry. Uh, my next highest is 0 0.90, this is letter B. And if I look at my graphs, 
Uh, number two and number three seem to follow pretty uh, linear trends, but three is more clouded. I have more variation away. I have a lot of these residuals that are going to be a lot harder to explain to somebody that asks about them. Whereas with number two, I do have a few residuals that are hard to explain, but they're not as far, and the majority of the data does fall pretty close to the line itself. So number two is going to be letter B. The next strongest, as we said, is number three, and that's going to go with the next strongest R squared value, which is 0.58, letter A. And that leads the last one, 0.12, which means 12% of the data can be explained. That's not much at all to be number one. If you notice, there are some points that are pretty close to the line. These ones, most of those you can explain pretty well. But all of these other lines that are, or all these other points that are really far away from the line itself, that's really hard to explain as to why they're so far away, why they don't follow that general trend that I'm trying to defend. So that's how R squared looks. Now in terms of how to calculate and interpret it, uh, again, these three examples are going to use data from previous sections. The car weight and miles per gallon is going to use data from page 8, which I already have in list 1 and list 2. Uh, if you are following this after 4.2, you probably already have those in your calculator as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to run the linreg x plus b on that and find our r squared value. So I'm going to do stat, calculate, I'm going to run 4, which is linreg x plus b on list 1 and list 2. So list 1 and list 2. Don't need frequency list, don't need store reg EQ. I run calculate and we get both our correlation coefficient point or negative 0.842 and our R squared value of 0 0.708 or as a percentage 70.8%. So that 70.8% refers to how much of the variation can be explained by the line, which is how we're going to interpret here. So 70.8% of the variation in, specifically we say the variation in Y, and the reason we say Y is because when we're talking about the variation, if you remember, I always talked about the residuals, which is the difference in Ys. Um, and for our Y variable was miles per gallon. So that's our Y variable. 70% of the variation in the y variable can be explained by the least squares regression line. The other 30% is not really well explained. But that's still pretty good. Alright, so that's how those work. So I have another couple quick examples. This is going to be a very short video. 4.3, again, it's just attaching one other thing. These other two examples, I already have the r and r squareds here because these have printouts on page 9 and page 10. So I just grabbed R and R squared from those printouts. For the first one, for Gallup Organization Survey and uh, Commute Time to Work, so that's where we were looking at the commute time to work for individuals and how they rate their level of well-being. We found an R value of negative 0.981 and an R squared value of 0.961. Since R squared is 0.961, we'd say that 96.1% of the variation in, again, remember this is supposed to be the y variable, and the y variable here was the well-being score. So 96.1% of the variation in well-being can be explained by the line. Remember yet again, I'm using the y variable because when we're talking about variation away from what you predict, we're always talking about it in terms of residuals, we're just talking about it in terms of vertical distance. Lastly, the average amount of time that someone wastes, I should say wastes, at work per day continued from page 10. This is where we were looking at uh, how much, like what year somebody was born and how much time they waste at work. So we had year as X and we had time wasted as Y. We didn't have a very strong relationship there. We had R was 0.288 and we had R squared of 0 0.083. Again, this is coming from the printout from page 10. So to interpret that, we would say that this percentage, which 0 0.083 would be 8.3% of the variation in uh, 
time wasted is explained by the least squares regression line. We say that it's a variation in time wasted because that was my y variable. The year that a person was born was the explanatory variable, or at least that's what they were trying to imply. With that said, that's everything in 4.3. Again, it's a very, very short section, so pretty easy to clean up there. Uh, we're going to go into section 4.4 next time, and that will be the end of chapter 4. But with that said, you should be able to go through and complete the homework for section 4.3. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, let me know in the comments or to ask your instructor directly. Uh, but with that said, I hope that you have a nice day.